Hello, following on from the previous video on the hen and chicks edging, I talked about designing a corner for this edging and I had some questions about how I design. Uh, I don't have a foolproof method, it's a bit of hit and miss and try things really. So if I look at this edging, the easiest thing to do first, I'm just going to bend it around the corner and that would work. So you could just remove one of the center rings here, oh sorry, one of the bottom rings here, and you, the edging would work. But I don't really like this empty space here on the corner, I'd rather have something fuller. So I made a little tattered doodle, I'd call it, to place it here and see what this would look like. And yes, I quite like the look of that. So then I tried to tat, tat it like this, and it looks like that. Yep, yeah, not bad. Um, but I think it's a bit too much empty space here in the middle. So I decided to remove the two little rings at the bottom, the two tiny rings, and it looks like this. So that's okay too, but I think the shape is a bit too round, where I prefer here the more sharp, really a lot more like a corner on this one. This one gets rounded if I remove the little rings. So what I decided to do in the end is to use this shape, but fill the space here in the middle with an extra little ring, and it looks like this. And yes, I like this design. You can see here, I tatted a whole sample and made a little square. So we've got four corners, and this is the corner I'm going to show you how to tat. So I'm going to move this one out of the way for now. So you want to start after you've done the large ring and the ring below. So you've done the large ring, you've turned over, you've done the 333 ring and joined, and you turn over again. And now this second little tiny ring, the little, the second chick, is going to be made differently. So wrap around the hand, leave four millimeter bare thread. I'm just going to eyeball for the moment. Four stitches. Two. Three. Four. And join. And the second half of the ring, instead of being four stitches again, is going to be two pico two. So first stitch, second stitch, two, a small pico, and two more stitches. One, two. Like this. And now we're not going to reverse work. We're going to, we're going to carry on, as you can see here from the tiny ring, and do... First of all, the center one, and then the ones all around the corner before we reverse ring, sorry, before we reverse work again. So, and there are no uh, bare threads in between those, the elements we're going to make now for the corner. So we're going to reverse work and make the center ring, which has two stitches in it. One, two, a pico. Two stitches, a pico, two stitches, a pico, two stitches, four, so one more pico. So there's four pico in the center ring with two stitches in between. So the last two stitches and close the ring. And then we're going to reverse work again. And the next ring has three stitches. One, two, three. Join to the tiny ring here where we added the extra pico. Two stitches. And three more picots separately by two stitches. So there's one pico, two stitches, one more pico, and two stitches, one more pico, and three stitches to finish. One, two, 
halfway and close the wing. Like this. Now, before we make the following ring, we're going to join to the next picot of the center ring that we've made with a lock join like this. And then we make the big ring. So three stitches. One, two, three, and join. Two more stitches, and then six picots separated by two stitches. One picot, two picots. Three picots, four picots, five picots, six, and complete the ring with three stitches at the end. So one, two, three, and close the ring. Like this and again we're going to join to the next pico of the center ring like that make sure there's no gaps I'm doing everything with no gaps in between and now we're repeating the ring that was on the left side of the big ring so three stitches One, two, three, and join to the last peak of the big ring. And then two stitches and three picots separated by two stitches. So one, that's the first picot, and two stitches. Second picot and two stitches third picot and three stitches to finish. Two, three. So we're still not reversing work. We're going to join again to the next picot of the center ring. And we're going to make the last tiny one here, two stitches, and join, two stitches, and a picot, and four stitches to complete the ring, two, three, and close the ring. So that is the last ring of the corner. So your corner is completed and now we're going to go back around working down the other side. And the last thing we're going to make is leave a bare thread and then make the edging ring here, which is going to be joined in two places instead of just one like we do on the, on the straight sides. So leave four millimeter bare thread and three stitches, one, two, three, and join to the previous ring on that side, on the last picot, and then we're gonna make three stitches, one, two, three, and join again to the top picot. Three more stitches, two, three, and the last picot, and three more stitches. One, two, three, and close the ring. And reverse work. 
And now we're ready to make another big ring. So I'll make a couple more rings and then you'll see you're starting to work down the other side. So four millimeter bare thread. I'll go a little bit quicker just to make the big ring. Three stitches and join. Two stitches and six picots separated by two stitches. First picot, second picot, third picot, fourth picot, fifth picot, sixth picot, and three stitches to complete the ring. Two, three. So I'm going a bit faster because we've done all those rings already. You know how to make the edging really. It was just to show what it looks like. We're going to do four millimeter bare thread and and border ring or one, two, three, and join. Three more stitches, two, three, and a picot. One, two, three, a second pico, or rather a third pico. So the first one was for joining. Whoop. Two, three, and close the ring. So you can see now how you've gone around the corner and we're just starting to work down a straight side again with the regular hen and chick border. And that's your corner made. That's it. I hope you enjoy making this border and edging. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.